Hi, Haley. Can you hear me? I didn't have the microphone down. Ah, okay. That'll do it. How you doing? Not too bad. <clears throat> we had a nice turnout today for the cafe. We had a um, performer who does like 60s folk bands. And so I think there were like 25 people there. And they, yeah, he did a lot of Beatles, which was a big hit. Nice. Really good. Hello. Hey. Hello. I guess good I'm a little morning late. springtime fan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know, a beautiful time of year. Mm -hmm. And a gorgeous day. Yeah. Love it. I know Karen can't make it. Okay. I'm trying to think, did Christina? Um, let me check my email really quick. I think Jackie said she has to leave right at 6.30. Yes, Jacqueline does. And she did say that she'll be logging on soon. And I don't see anything from Christina about missing today. Okay, maybe I'm thinking about the dinner. That she couldn't, she couldn't make that. What is uh, what is quorum for this meeting? What must we hit? Oh my God! Hold on, let me count. The majority, <laughs> isn't it? The majority, yeah. So I think we would need the There's seven of us, so there'd be four. Four, yeah. Good math, Chad. There you go. Good. <laughs> oh. Thank God for those fingers. Yeah. Great. Right. Quorum is a simple majority, right? Yeah. That's what it would be, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think you're muted, Chad. Man, manly maroon today. Oh, there we go. Okay. Is everybody, are the boys wearing maroon? There yeah. you go. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, I didn't know we were supposed to coordinate outfits. You don't have on black? No, I actually have, uh, you can't you can't tell because I'm dark. I have like I have black lavender. Oh. There you go. There's black. What is the Bruins game though? So black is also appropriate. <laughs> black and gold. You must have known that, Terry, huh? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. <clears throat> they win. They're going to the cup. Oh really? Mm -hmm. This is a big game. Yeah. <clears throat> Hopefully they fare better than the Celtics. <clears throat> Let's see. I thought I saw Christina pop on, but I'm not. Is she with us? Not yet. I just have the five of us right now. Well, they might be a few minutes late, so I don't know if you want to give them a couple more minutes or not. Wait to 5.05? Oh. Do you want to do? Whatever the simple majority wants. <laughs> <laughs> How about 5.04? Okay. okay. Oh, oh, very timely. Christina, welcome. Hi, Christina. Hi, Jean. How are you? Good. Nice to see you. I got to get my glasses. Can't see.
Why can't I hear it? We can hear you, but your little your voice is a little shaky from some kind of connection issue. All right. You know what? It's because I, I'm on a phone. Mm. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get on my um, laptop because that is the most stable connection in this home. And uh, just that I was trying not to get up because I have a kitty who insists on oh. sleeping in between <laughs> my legs <laughs> on my recliner. She's 10 months old and she thinks I'm her mother. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. <laughs> she is. She mm -hmm. is. So I am going to move her, take her, put her down. <laughs> there you go, kitty. And I'll see you guys in a minute when I get up and get my laptop. I love cats. <laughs> I know. I'm a, I'm a cat lady. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody know any good jokes? Not off the top of my head. Me neither. I need to have the mic <laughs> in front of me. We should have the people. Volunteer thing went great. Oh yeah, that I was got a really little nice. goodie grab bag to take home with neat things in it to grow. Yes, Julia did a, a nice, great job. Nice meal. Met some oh, new people. That was so cute, and everything really did go very, very well at that uh, dinner. Yeah. And uh, thank you for who put those little bags together. That was something. Julia, else. Julia she did just that. Did such an yeah. awesome job with the she the really plantable did. pad covers and stuff. Yeah. You got seeds everywhere, so that's great. <laughs> yeah. thank, thank you. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, it was a very that's nice really dinner. Good. Lovely job. Yep. Lots of nice touches. The music, the gifts. Yeah, yeah. It was wonderful. Very well done. Thank you very much. You know, any senior center worth its salt has to throw a good party. That that is a requirement, and we do it pretty top notch here. Yep, it is nice. Next year, I'd like to see each staff member assigned a table, and mm -hmm. that we would go to each table. Oh, I think this year I'll sit with Haley. <laughs> oh, next what? year, I think I'll sit with Al. <laughs> That's possible. Although I will say, in our defense, it's really hard to sit and eat when you're throwing the event. Like, I know I, I don't really eat when I do stuff like that. I wait till later. Um, but, but yeah, it would be nice to mix it up. We didn't want to do assigned seating this time because it can kind of be, you know, people want to mingle. Mm -hmm. But. Hi, Jacqueline. Hey. Hi, Norma. Hi. Hi, Jean. How are you? Good. How you doing? Okay. Hi, Norma. Hi. Hi, Dennis. Hey. We haven't started yet. We have one member who is switching. I don't know what she was on, but she's switching to her laptop. So as soon as Christina oh. comes back, <laughs> We will um, get this meeting okay. started. Well, I just got back from a meeting in Amherst. So. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> I feel I should um, get off video and then just be on when, um, you know, my time comes. Okay. Is, I can that do that. Okay? Yeah, that's fine. I'll... Um... Oh, let me see if I know how to do that. You can do it yourself. No. You can push it on a lower level. Oh, wow. Sounds like you have tech help there. <laughs> yeah, I says, well, I can do that. I said, well, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it's all a matter of knowing how. Yeah. I'll do it for you, Norma. All right. Well, I can just click off the video, can't I? Yes, you can. Yeah. Yeah, you could. Okay, Christina is back.
Can you hear us, Christina? Oh yes, I can. This is this is my better connection. Awesome. All right. So we will call the Counseling on Aging meeting to order. Hello there. Good evening, everyone. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, section 18. This meeting of the Council on Aging is being conducted via remote participation. The meeting is also being recorded. So let's take roll call and see who's here. Terry? Here. Chad? I don't think it's actually being recorded. It is, yep, right yeah, in the corner. I've got a red dot on mine recording. Mm -hmm. Jacqueline? I'm here. Dennis? Right here. Christina? Here. Anne? I, don't, I haven't seen her log on. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen her either. Maybe she'll be by later. OK. And Karen is out. Okay. Public comment. Are there any members of the public that would like to express their views up to three minutes? Is there anyone joining us, Haley? There are. We have a few people in the audience. Whether or not they have questions or comments, I don't know. But all they have to do is raise their hand. Okay, since I can't see that, I will be counting on your eyes to guide me here. I don't see anything yet. Going once, going twice. <laughs> I think we can probably proceed. Okay. Excellent. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Is this Anne's last meeting? No. When, when is Anne's term up? Next month? No, June. Oh, okay. End of June, end of the fiscal year. Okay. Okay. Well, welcome again, everyone. Happy we could get together. Um, there's been lots of things going on at the Senior Center. Um, Haley and staff have been quite busy. So um, without further ado, Haley, you want to give us? Yes, your... I do. I have to give you an IOU. I will give you full figures for two months in May. It just was not something we really had time for because, like you said, um, we had our open house on May on. April 3rd, had about 100 or so people in attendance, um, which was great, which was more than last year. Um, the town manager came, some people from the town council came, so that's always nice when they when they show up to support us. And we had you know, several members of the council, several people from the friends group. Um, so I think that went really well. Um, we definitely had some people interested and we signed them up for a few programs which is about as good as it gets really for us. And people loved the DJ. I heard very good things about Lenny and good reviews about the food. And I, you know, as long as everyone leaves happy, I'm pretty happy. And I would consider that event a, a, set, and a very successful two years running now. Yep. Um, and then we had our volunteer dinner just last week, right? Yeah. Um, we had about 40 or so volunteers, so that's the majority of our volunteers. Some people weren't able to attend, and then on top of the 40, there was another 15 or so staff involved. Um, you know, we had help serving. Um, again, Paul Bockelman showed up, and Lynn Griesmer from the town council showed up, so I was really happy to see both of them. And the volunteers, I have heard nothing but positive feedback. They really liked the gifts, which again, Julia did a great job. It's very thoughtful, all the little plantings and, and things like that. Um, you know, I worked really hard with her and with Rachel, our intern, to do as much like a, a real restaurant service as possible. You know, the dinner was buffet style, but we cleared plates, we refilled water, we did plated dessert. Um, we had that open hour in the beginning with the pianist um, so people could just mingle and talk. And, you know, from what I hear, it was really great for them just to get to talk and chat and get to know each other a little bit better while not having to volunteer. So they did feel a little pampered, which is what we were aiming for. Um, this year, we had the support of the Mass Service Alliance um, with a grant from them to do this dinner and some other events. We're going to be training some volunteers on CPR and doing a volunteer fair in May, um, you know, 
but I absolutely want to make this uh, a regular occurrence, even if we don't have grant funding to do it. it you know, it, it's certainly something that they all deserve for their their countless hours and their effort. Um, the senior shuttle, uh, not senior shuttle, silver shuttle will be launching May 1st. So the newsletter should be getting back to us late this week. Um, if anyone doesn't know how we do the process, there's folding and taping and everything else, but we actually splurged a little. We got the, the copier company, uh, Amherst Copy, to do the whole bundle. So even though we're getting it a little bit late in the month, it will go out as is, you know, the same day we pick them up, we're gonna bring them right to the post office. So people should still expect to get their senior spirit newsletter the first couple of days of May, you know, assuming we get them in by Friday. So I'm very happy that that's on track too, because to have to do two major events and the newsletter would have been a tremendous undertaking, you know, something that we're, really would have been a lot of staff time and, and need a lot of support for. Um, but to get back to the shuttle, so that's going to be launching. Um, Rob has already taken a couple people on test rides. You know, we've made sure the van is functioning and cleaned up and still working on getting the siding done, but that'll happen soon. And so he's working Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And so the van will run Monday, Wednesday, and Friday until we can get some additional funding to either extend his hours or hire another part-time driver. Um, but it still is a good option for people. And we're especially trying to get folks to the center. So if somebody, you know, we had an individual who needed a foot care appointment, they can't drive. So that was great. We could pick them up, bring them to the center. They got their feet taken care of. And, you know, that was a really great experience. And that's what we're aiming for. It's just, you know, this is not going to replace any particular mode of transportation, but it will augment, give you a couple more options, particularly if you want to attend a program. This will be for you. Um, we are also launching two new caregiver focused products programs. Helen will be leading a stress management um, for caregivers and a caregiver support group um, in May, the dates of which are in the senior, this current edition of the senior spirit. And, um, you know, as we all know, it's, it can be very burdensome to, to take care of someone that is a 24-7, 365 job. And, you know, we want to make sure that if people need support, they know where to get it. Um, let's see, what else? We did our we did our monthly e-newsletter, and that has been pretty good. Um, you know, keeping really busy with programs at the center. You know, I'm seeing a lot more people just coming in and hanging out, which is wonderful. Um, so I, I like the progress of where we're headed, and going into um, you know June and July, we'll have our community safety day program over at Mill River Rec. We'll bring together the district attorney's office, the sheriff's department, the fire department, police department, and the crest department um, to promote public safety to people. That'll be a lot of fun. It was last year, almost 300 people came. So if we can get a little bit more than that, I'd be very happy. Um, and then July 4th will be happening Saturday, July 1st. I'm the volunteer coordinator for July 4th. So if anyone wants to give up a beautiful Saturday and get a behind the scenes peek, at how, the, how they make the magic happen, um, you can shoot me an email or maybe you know someone who might want to do that. And that's all I can think of for right now, but that feels like a lot. So I have a few questions. Yeah. You mentioned um, the van is going to be Monday, yep. Wednesday, Friday. Is that all day, Haley? Or it'll be about nine to three. So, you know, obviously, if somebody maybe needs to get someplace at like 8 45 we'll have a little bit of wiggle room but I don't want to promise too much where it's you know we haven't operated a transit program in many years so and this particular van is new so we want to kind of set the expectations manageable um you know but if people need to get to the senior center if they need help getting to a medical appointment they should, should please give us a call and if we can make it work we definitely will awesome and then my other question was that um, you launched the, I don't know, I'm going to call it Spirit Light, mm -hmm. the, the online version. Yes. How how did that go and how many, how are it's signups? Well. I know we um, the signups were good. There were some that we couldn't really tell what the letters are, but that happens when you're going off of the paper. Um, so I think what we are probably going to do is just print some versions around the center and, you know, explain to people just leave you leave us your email 
will add you to the list because um, I think that'll make it a lot more streamlined. And I'm trying to work out a way where it's easier to get it on the town website because some of the issue is that you know you have to you have to go through a couple of steps in order to get confirmed for it, and not everyone knows that. So, but we have our own list. We can send it independently of that. So people should just let us know. You know, send myself or send um, Senior Center at AmherstMA.gov, and we'll get you on the list. Okay, great. Because that I have to say, I I did do the sign up online. Mm -hmm. It took mm -hmm. me a couple of tries, yeah. and it was. Yeah. I wasn't even certain at the end if I was successful. So yeah. So if in doubt, just let us know, and um, we'll definitely we can just manually add you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Terry. So will they mail it to you or email it to you if you delight? Yeah. The light is just email. It's a way okay. to get a snapshot of everything big that's happening at the center that month. Because you know sometimes when you you read the April May edition. Maybe you sign up for programs in April, but by the time May comes around, you've you've lost your newsletter or you forgot which one you wanted to do. Something happened. So this will be a way to kind of just remind you of what we've got going on. Okay. Great. And I just want to um, echo Haley's thanks for um, the folks who were able to come out. Um, for the open house and help us out. Really appreciate it. It was really glad that council had a presence there and also, um, you know, for attending the, the dinner. I think it is really important that we are engaged and visible at all the, the senior activities. So certainly appreciate those of you who are able to, to attend. It makes a huge difference. And I think sends a message to our, our community about, you know, how much we care and what we're involved with. So yeah. And, and big ideas for the future, Dennis, with regards to your pictures. <laughs> I want to make sure you are hard at work shooting those. And I, <laughs> I want I want to be able to see them because I think seeing pictures of all the variety of events is going to make is really going to help us make connections with others and really advertise and publicize our various activities. So yeah. So um, I have to post his pictures from the dinner up on Facebook. And I honestly want Dennis to start taking more videos. We should also be doing some videos at the senior center. So uh oh. Plant that seed. So okay. does that mean it would be on something like a TikTok or Oh my gosh, no. I do not. Okay. <laughs> no, no I don't. TikTok. That's not my preferred social media, but it would be nice to have videos that we could like put on YouTube or you can post yeah. videos to Facebook, you know, just something more like a picture only tells so many words, right? But you kind of get a little bit more of a fleshed out idea with a video. Oh. Okay, we'll do, we'll do, I'll, uh, okay. I'll, I'll figure out how to do that with my camera. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you won't be videotaping me, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, do you have your hand up? No? No, That's he does so not. weird, I have a little, there's a little white glove above your head on my screen, but. <laughs> Maybe it's my computer. <laughs> Strange. Does anyone else see it? Wow. Yeah, there it is. Mm. <laughs> All right. Whatever. I don't know. There you go. Nope. Okay. All right. Very good. Does anyone else have any other questions for Haley on the activities? No. All right. So we're gonna move on to old business. And if you would indulge me, I wanna reorder what we tackle. So I wanna start with the Resilience Center. Um, previous meeting, we identified the Resilience Center as our short-term goal. And um, I know Ann and Chad had done a lot of work on this and sent out some of their information, their research to all of you and asked you to review that and think about what questions you would um, want answers to with regards to how seniors would kind of navigate, negotiate a resilience center. Um, and so heard back from um, some folks and did compile those questions. And Haley, can you do a share? shared screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, I feel like we're going super high tech here. We are. I don't have to do a shared screen, but hopefully Haley does. Here we are. Okay, so here 
We wanted everybody to be able to see the questions that we um, we have thus far. And certainly if anybody has any additional questions, we can add them. But these are questions that we wanted to um, ask the town. So um, these are not in any particular order. And I'm just gonna read them in case anybody has difficulty reading the print. What town Wait, buildings to make it bigger? generator that could be used as a temporary warming or cooling shelter? Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. Are there buildings at Amherst, meaning college, Hampshire College and UMass, in addition to Mullins, that could be used? How many people can be accommodated at each of these respective lo locations? What is the emergency communication system? How will information be shared if phone lines are down and there's no internet? I think their um, kind of standard emergency is the reverse. Um, is it four, three, what do you call it? reverse nine one one? Is that I think I think that's what it's called. Yeah. The reverse. It, they shoot out the message. This is your town manager. There's a you know water pipe break or whatever the heck it is. Um, so how will information get get shared to folks? Um, what arrangements have been made to offer emergency preparedness information in languages other than English? Um, I think, you know, we know this is really important for people to be prepared and to have given thought to in the event of an emergency. What are they to do? What are the resources? Where can they go? But we need to make sure that people who don't know English are also receiving that same information. Um, and how would that happen? Um, does the town have a list of seniors in their addresses? And I'm just wondering, Haley, do you do you know the answer to that? Um, I can tell you the clerk has a list of registered voters. So yes, in effect, we do have some list of where older folks are living, but that's only if they are a registered voter. Otherwise, it's you know it's really hard to capture people if you know if they're not engaged with the town in some way. And when it comes to knowing seniors that are living alone, well, that's really tough. I mean, we know of some because we have our, our database, but that database is not totally up to date. You know, after the pandemic, it would need a lot of fixing. But even once you fix it, the reality is that, that information is going to be constantly changing. You know, mm -hmm. I might be living alone now, but maybe in five years times, two years times, I move into assisted living. So it's, I think that might be one of the things where it's just not possible to really have a, a fully accurate picture because of the nature of the information and how many variables are involved in that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then does the town know, you know, if a senior is disabled, who they are and where they live? The town, um, I think it's the, in, the police department and the fire department in conjunction have a list of like older adults who have dementia or, you know, some other, um, you know, kind of something that people want to keep track of. So people can register with them. But short of that, um, you know, we know some folks, but we're not going to know everybody. You know, the, the people that we would most need to target are the people who are the hardest to interact with because they're the folks who are maybe like living by themselves and maybe they're not getting a lot of personal contact, you know, and somebody like that can easily fall through the cracks just because, you know, we, they're not on our radar. They're not, we, they don't come to the senior center. They don't go to, um, you know, a meeting. They don't go to their local coffee shop. They don't keep touch with their neighbors. So, um, you know, we know some, but when I, when I read this, sometimes I think do is the intention of asking these questions going to be, we want an answer where we get a, a full yes, we know who all the disabled seniors are, or, you know, then I wouldn't feel comfortable saying yes to that. Well, I, I will just speak for myself. I don't expect that we're going to get 100%, but mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about if somebody, for example, is in a wheelchair and there's an emergency, mm -hmm. to me, it would behoove the town to know that. So if there's a fire at my house and I can't, you know, open the door, or get myself out that, you know, that. Mm. So, yes. I mean, I, I feel like there's a good faith, you know, 
effort that should be made. Um, same thing, you know, to me, and again, I'd be interested in hearing what the rest of you think of this. I think trying to get a list of where, um, what seniors live alone would be an important thing for us to do. I well appreciate we'll never get 100%, but to me, that's a vulnerable population, whether it's for socialization or in the event of an emergency. I mean, I could think of a whole host of reasons mm -hmm. why it would make sense to know where these folks live. So if we don't already have that, I, I think that would be important for us to try to make happen. And I don't know if it would be the senior center that would take the lead or, or not, but what do the rest of you think about that? <clears throat> It sounds, it's, I like the idea. It sounds like the senior center uh, and, and associated organizations such as the COA and the Friends could also uh, could do its, it, uh, our best as far as publicizing the need to accumulate that data. Uh, but after that, I, I think the, the people who would be most interested uh, on, a, on, a, on an emergency kind of a basis would be, it would be the police and the fire departments. Mm -hmm. After that, uh, it, 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 the, the 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 information could also uh, be available to uh, to uh, uh, to the senior center itself. But I, I think uh, our role would be one of primarily of publicity. Mm -hmm. you know, that's yeah. my thought. Yeah, I think uh, I unless somebody else has a thought, I just have two other things logistical that we should consider when we do this. And the first is not everyone who is vulnerable will want to be on this list. Sure. And I, we probably already know that, but it's worth repeating that some people are just gonna say, nope, no, thank you. <laughs> and the other thing is when we're talking about specifically people's health conditions, we have to consider HIPAA. We have to consider if we accumulate this list, who has access to it? Where do we keep it? How secure is it? Um, you know, so I agree it is really helpful to know that. I think one of the best ways we can know that is to get people to come to the senior center and have those personal connections with us so that we can say, oh, you know, like we do, like we often have done with the, um, there's a few people in the center who this person usually comes every day or they come every Wednesday and we don't see them. And then, then we can say, oh, let me, let me do a wellness check. Let me call them. Let me call their, you know, their primary contact and see, you know, what's going on. Um, Cause I get kind of worried when we start accumulating lists like that of like, you know, you don't want that to fall into the wrong hands. And I certainly don't feel like I, you know, I would rather leave that to emergency management. I think they have the, the in-house equipment to deal with that. Yeah, we don't need to know it. It's, it's for the cops and the fire guys. Yeah, primarily, yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't really, so my intent was not that we would have the list, mm -hmm. but we would be Help curate. able to okay. get on the list and sign up so that others in town who need to know would have it. Okay. Yeah, we can publicize, definitely. Yeah. I think that would be a really good thing to advertise at Community Safety Day if there are some COA members who want to be there and we can, you know, we have file of life. At the senior center, that's another really good thing everybody should have on their fridge. We can mm -hmm. definitely talk about, um, you know, these programs and you know, talking about: Do you have a, a go bag? Do you have, you know, what is your plan in an emergency? Yes, I agree. I agree absolutely. Yeah, it's primarily a, a information that really should be in the hands of uh, police and fire. Uh, and and Haley, I think you're right about being very, very careful about the, the availability of that, kind of that kind of information, that police and fire should probably be just about the only ones who really have it. And Chad, do you have your hand up? Yeah, I don't see on the agenda how much time we have for this item. I've, I've got lots of comments if we have more time. If not, that's all right, too. Um, it's five. 33 so we've got a little less than an hour so i don't know how much gene if you if you have more we want on this or if we want to pivot we can always um come back to this too and maybe invite the fire chief again now that we have some really pointed questions that might be that might be a good way to 
move forward. Yep. I'd like to keep it on old business and massage it ourselves. I, I, okay. I don't want to have um, town officials come. Okay. But that's just me. Chad, do you have other questions you want added to the list or feedback on the questions that are currently sitting there? Um, let's see, how can I word it? Um, I don't remember us passing a vote, uh, having a motion uh, or discussing that we should put this on. Uh, our agenda is one of the, you know, working, um, one of the points of our work together. It could have just bypassed me, I don't know. Um, so that was basically why I was um, asking, um, you know, how, how much time was allotted on the agenda for it. Um, to me, uh, well, I, I'd like to make a correction. Ann and I have not been working on it. Um, we work together on uh, future planning for the organization. That's, that's what we were tasked with by the um, board. Um, I did educate her on, she, she had an idea and a concern, and I, I named it as a resilience center and, and educated her about it. It's, it's not really my issue. One thing that I do see on this uh, document is uh, a very bad idea. And that's to go to the Mullen Center or other some other large center, uh, such as happened after Katrina at the Houston Astrodome. Yeah. People were very, very injured there. And that's not a way that you can planfully um, take care of people. It's a way that you unthinkingly in an emergency knee knee jerk reaction do things. So True. I wouldn't support um, you know those those kind of things. With all due respect, that won't be our decision in the event yep. of emergency. Well I, I don't have to support it if I don't agree with it. The other part I was thinking was um, since I didn't see it I, since I didn't see us come to a consensus a motion and all that, I, I don't know if this applies to other people beside the elders, the homeless, the disabled, and so on. So, you know, that would be a concern of mine. You know, is this just about the elders? We are and, the Council on Aging, and that is, me? we were looking at this from the lens of seniors. So okay. certainly yeah. an emergency impacts the entire town, but that's not within our purview. We were just trying to... Yep. Um, Thanks for that. The list of, of questions that we had in terms of how an emergency might impact seniors and what information would be useful. Uh, Jean, I want to let you know Christina has her hand up, and I would like to remind people that the agenda doesn't items don't need to be there. Needs to be no motion. You know, the the chair and I will make the agenda, and we solicit feedback, but it, none of that has to come to a vote. So, thank you, Christina. Sorry. Yes, um, the point I made when this document was sent out and I didn't really ask uh, the questions the way that you saw was helpful, um, Chad, but I mentioned exactly that, that we should look for places within our town and not uh, go to the Mullen Center and places outside of uh, our town, and because sure. we, we may not be talking about thousands of people. And the Mullen Center, if it's available, the first group of people that are going to want to go there, if there are students in town, they're going to want to fill it up with whoever is nearby. And so we should always begin by looking for places within our own town. And I think the issue we were having is that. Um, that we need to ask is, will any of the structures, existing structures in our region right here have the um, capacity to, to have power, you know, extra power, um, backup power if the power went out? And that was the biggest issue. What I see this whole thing is as a resilience center is a place that people can go to, they can stay warm, they can be safe, they're volunteers to help them. And, and basically that's what I see it as, you know? 
-hmm. I don't know if that's your vision, but that's basically what I see it as. That, you know, we take care of our own and our own community and, surround, and surrounding communities. Mm -hmm. I absolutely agree yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I, I tend, based on my experience and being a, a sort of a blow in for only being here for 20 years or so, um, I, I tend to uh, see that the town has is is sort of divided into a north side and a south side. And uh, one of the things I'm I'm not necessarily advocating for uh, voting for the the new school, but uh, apparently the 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 new school is capable of virtually uh, existing off grid because of its its. Uh, carbon footprint and and power generating capabilities and that sort of thing. And uh, based on what I've seen of those plans, it looks like it would be a really terrific emergency. Uh, a, a terrific emergency um, uh, 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 center. Um, my attitude about those places is that they should be capable of offering clothing, I mean, uh, food and shelter. And uh, I think the only thing that you would really need to add to that new school would be some cots. And you'd be ready to go for at least, at least the south side of town. And the, other, uh, the, the north side, I don't know what building already exists, uh, that to offer that, but what you need to you need to look at at uh, a place that could stand up in the event of, of a, a serious power outage, or and uh, to offer heating or or cooling, and a kitchen, which that almost automatically puts it into the realm of a school with a cafeteria. And so then you just, once again, for the north side, you just add some cots. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's officially designated as, uh, a, as, a, as, a, a, as a center, then you know that you, in, an, in case of an emergency, you've got a choice depending on where you're living of either the north or the south side. Mm. So that's, that's where I'm at and I, I you know, uh, very much agree with uh, with Christina. Yeah, I think it is important for us to bear in mind we're not the decision makers. You know, in the event of an emergency, town officials are going to be directing and guiding us. So, what I was hoping we could do is gather information so we would know if you know there was an emergency on the north side. We, yep. you know, where's the closest place people could get moved or asked to, you know, go Absolutely. to, but we don't, I mean, we all know in an emergency, you know, there's some things we can do, but if, if people have to go to a center, it isn't like we have the keys and we can unlock the doors to town hall or whatever, you know, others are going to be sort of guiding us in, in doing the prep work on that. So um, this, this list of questions is more for our kind of education and yep. um, peace of mind, if you will, but we're certainly not the ones making the decisions or, or directing people there. Yeah, but if, if what I'm saying is that if we, if we voice our concerns and ask the questions, then we can also uh, raise enough issues to get them thinking in the direction that we would probably like them to go. Mm -hmm. no. there, there. And, and I agree. Was that your hand, Christina? Sorry, maybe I didn't. I think it was Christina. Was, and then Jackie also wanted to say something, but I, I was gonna say that, but Dennis took the word out of my mouth, is there's nothing wrong, even if we're not the decision makers, there's nothing wrong with community engagement uh, as a council, participation and making suggestions to the powers that are going to make the decision. Yep. 
we we can make we can make suggestions we can say this is our vision we don't know what you have in store or plan and we don't know how the emergency is going to pan out but what we envision is a place where people can go they can stay warm and they can be safe yep. until this emergency is over and that's basically what we do have as a citizen the right to participate in our government and let them know what we think absolutely mm -hmm. yep jacqueline Thank you. And I, I would, I would uh, ditto what you're saying. I think we should approach it um, knowing that we're entitled to it and letting the powers that be know that this is a recommendation that we're making. And we would so approve if we could work together to uh, put it in place in case the need arises. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Okay. Harry? I think something like this should have been already in place. Yep. Yes. They shouldn't have to leave it to us to think about this. <laughs> but that's just my that's my just my spin on it. The ditto. With the science of this town and yeah. all the students, they should have thought of this 10 years ago. At least 10. Yeah. I'm giving them a little slack. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I, I wrote tonight, before, huh? As I said in a previous meeting, uh, I, I, I'm old enough to remember the days of, of being threatened by, uh, by the Soviet Union and, and nuclear holocaust. And, and back then there was an entire thing called the civil defense yeah and that's pretty much what we're, we're what we're looking at here except that we're looking more in terms of natural disasters rather than you know nuclear holocaust so but it's it's civil defense and it's mutual uh, mutual aid right yeah yeah that's all there really is to it yeah yeah i i um was trying to I didn't know I had not lowered my hand. Do you have something? Yes, I I, I, I I so agree with, with um, what has been said. And I think it is very important that, that seniors not be uh, considered as an afterthought consideration. I think that we should be and, and, and I think the town should be entitled to have us be at the forefront. Yep. Mm -hmm. And in all honesty, involved in the planning. Yes. 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 Right. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. Can, does anyone have any other questions you, think should be added to this list. I um I don't I think, think it's a good list. Okay. This, what is the outcome? What do we want to do with it? What what what's the goal here? What what are we talking about? Um what's the action? Uh, are there any dates? Uh any specific persons responsible or has this just been a nice little discussion? <laughs> The next step, I think, Chad, is when we feel like we've identified all the questions that we would like to um, get the answers to or find out where things are at, I think um, probably the most efficient, and I defer to others and, and Haley, your thoughts on this, would be to invite um, folks to come back and respond to the questions. We could certainly, whether it's the chief of police or I don't know, is he the primary emergency manager for the town? I don't even know who the- uh, Tim Nelson, the fire chief is. The chief. Um, I mean, I thought that this was a really great little chat and I'm really pleased that we're thinking so proactively. Um, these are really great questions, I think for us all to sit on or, you know, people can reach out to Tim and ask how many people 
does the Mullen Center hold? Um, you know, some of these we can definitely get the answers to, come back and discuss. And I think it would be appropriate to loop in the town staff who are responsible for implementing these plans. You know, there are special accommodations that need to happen. Um, and we just, I'm sure that they have, they are really phenomenal. I love working with all of them, but, you know, I think just for the peace of mind that I'm hearing, it would be good to, to bring them back in for another conversation. How about if we get the answer, these questions to them so they can research them and get back to us? Hmm. We could do that too. You don't want to put them on the spot. No, <laughs> no gotcha questions. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I think that <laughs> makes sense because maybe there is something on here they don't have the answer to and they can quickly get cracking. Right, and then, then yeah. we can have them come back and tell us the answers to these questions and, yes. you know. Yeah, or here. Maybe they have the answers to most of them, which would be the best case scenario, in which but case, they, you know. They should share it. They should. And yeah. we'll make them. That's yeah. right. <laughs> okay. Do Sounds you need good. me to keep sharing the questions? No, nope, we're good. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So we will plan to send those questions along to, I guess, Tim and other town people? Yeah, I think Tim is the best person to start with. Okay. And he's great to work with, so. Yep, yeah. yep, excellent, okay. Um, I'm gonna, again, continue to mix up the order. Our council on agent vacancy recruitment strategies, and I'm intentionally moving agent dementia to later um, because we've got, a follow up with them. So um, last time we talked about the fact that we currently have uh, a vacancy, we project having more in the not so distant future, and we need to try to spread the word and um, attract folks. One idea that came out of last uh, our last meeting was um, to um, Norma's husband sent it out to the retired faculty and Retired five college faculty, I think, or retired UMass. I think it was UMass. Yeah. Um, and so that was awesome that, you know, that went out. Um, but I think we need to keep um, thinking about how we can spread the word. And certainly, you know, the, I'm going to call it the old fashioned talk it up amongst your friends um, is always. Um, one strategy, but I'm just wondering, do folks have any other ideas or I guess maybe how did you find out about it? Um, maybe there's something else that any comes to mind for folks. Terry? I was a volunteer, I am a volunteer at the Amherst Senior Center and Rosemary, um, you know, came and talked to me. Mm -hmm. And that's how, uh, because they needed a secretary. So I was doing the secretary for almost a year as a volunteer basis. And then she asked me if I wanted to join the council on aging. Okay. And then she left. Yeah. Anyway. So I, you know, we have a lot of flyers at the senior center. Why couldn't we put up one about the council on aging? A little bit about what we do, what we're looking for, what's the term length and stuff like that. Yeah. I wonder, could we, Julia does a volunteer times, I think it's a yes. monthly. Yes. I wonder, would we be too oh, yeah. good if we requested to, yeah. for her to feature? This is a volunteer position. Um, yeah. We can do that if anyone has time. Um, I think it's Friday, May 12th. We're gonna do a volunteer fair, hopefully on the common. So we could certainly set up a table and if there's a couple council members who want to talk to the public about what we do and why we're awesome, that would be great. Um, so we can do the fair, we can do the volunteer times. If someone wants to make a flyer or something and send it to me, I'll post it up all around the building. Um, the one thing I kind of wanted to put uh, plant a little seed in people's minds is like maybe to think about like what kind of like professional history we might want um, for someone joining the council, like. If we are looking for someone maybe with a social work background or someone who has actually worked in gerontology, um, it might be good to kind of consider what kind of strengths we're looking for, you know, particularly since we're trying to, you know, plan for the future, you know, what are the, what are the things that we really want in a person? 
And you could put that on the flyer or Julia could add that. that into the newsletter. Yeah. You know. Do we have history on um, previous councils, Haley, in terms of, I don't know if they collected that kind of information. Um, I would have to look at the, at the sheet that Angela sent me to be sure, but I think on the community participation form that you all filled out, I think it does have you list your, your profession. Yeah. I don't know if anybody remembers doing that, but I think it does list that. Yeah. Okay. Because I was just wondering if historically you had, you know, a faculty member, you know, I'm going to just use Karen as an example from communication disorders. I mean, it makes sense to have, you know, an audiologist. Yeah. Or... Oh, and that's great. If we could have like a direct tie to one of the colleges, that would, I think, really help us strategically. Um, yeah. For yes, sure. I agree. Because it's, yeah your foot in the door there and mm -hmm. there's all kinds of other resources there so okay okay well continue to um ponder and if you have any awesome ideas please shoot them to Haley because we want to try to get the best possible people to join us excellent all right um age and dementia friendly report so oh isn't she cute <laughs> oh. <laughs> She's perfect. She said she wants mm. to join the council. Oh, that's she good. Sign her up. Sign her up. <laughs> we can watch the fur fly then. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll cease and desist with my bad puns. Um, <laughs> age and friendly dementia report. So a while back, Becky came and did her presentation, and we got through part of it we didn't get through all of it and so um we at the last meeting talked about um going through the remainder of the report and drafting any questions or comments folks had um i don't know if, if everybody had an opportunity to do that um i, I heard from a couple of people with comments but I realized when I went back and read one time, I said, send it to me. And another time it was supposed to go to you, Haley. So I apologize. I never connected with you. So I don't know that we've, we've got a complete list. If you did. I don't have any list. So that's fine. Anyways. Okay. Okay. But the good news is Becky's going to be coming in the future. So I'm assuming there's still time. Oh yeah, that... she is going to be coming. So we have, I think there were two sections that we didn't get to. And then she also has created a draft, which I'll send out to you hopefully tomorrow of like the action steps that, you know, they're recommending that we would take to become more age and dementia friendly. So we can review that. She can talk about the sections. She can go over the action steps. Maybe we can identify a couple that we could think, you know, th we think we can accomplish in the immediate. Um, and then we can, it was really beneficial to have a pretty lengthy Q&A. So I would say we probably want to devote more time to that than we did the first go around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So was everybody able to open the age and dementia friendly? I know a couple of folks emailed me that they couldn't. And then I asked Haley to send it out. I think in a, you sent it out in two different versions, I think. So I'm hoping. Yes. Be successful with that? No, I couldn't. I couldn't open either of them. Really? Hmm. Well, I'll have to maybe take another look then. Because I needed um, page forty to the end. Starting at page forty huh. to the end is what our speakers go okay. over. Okay. Huh. I'll check the link. Okay. I can't do any sort of conversion though. I have no help on this. So Haley, hopefully you can do your wizardry. <laughs> I'll take a look at it. Hopefully it's an easy fix. Okay. All right. So more to go on that. If you are successful in opening it, if you want to take another look and you know see if any other questions or comments come to mind, but certainly there'll be another opportunity to um, engage with Becky, which is which is tremendous. Anybody have any questions or comments about that? Okay. 
I'm going to move us on to new business, which is new member orientation. Um, since we are going to be, um, God willing, successful in our recruitment efforts and getting new members, to me, the next logical step is um, looking at their orientation. Although I think all of us had some kind of orientation to the council, I'm not sure. I think it could be it could be enhanced. And so um, wanted to chat with you about what you think would be um, good to do to welcome new members, to make them feel comfortable, to help them sort of hit the ground running. Obviously there's the notebook with, you know, kind of the, the do's and don'ts and the why's and the wherefores. Um, a couple of ideas I had would be to have a welcome meeting. I don't know if it would be with the entire council or just a few members. Um, sometimes when I've joined a group, um, I've been given a buddy. Um, you know, somebody that's your go-to person when, you know, they're talking about something in the meeting. It's like, what the heck is she? What does that mean? You know, it's somebody you can you know, meet with on the side and say, you know, the last meeting, Haley said, you know, COA, what the heck does that mean? Mm. Um, and you don't have to feel awkward or embarrassed doing stuff like that in front of a group. Yeah. Um, I think getting a tour of the bang center so you can see where the senior center is located, what the space looks like and meeting the staff um would be really good because i think we really want to be make sure our new members are really engaged and have an appreciation when you know particularly when haley's rattling off the report to know the setting where this stuff is happening and some of the inherent challenges that they face in offering programs and a not so terrific building i i think is really important and um so those were a few thoughts I had. Any feedback? You think it's a good idea? Do you have any other ideas about what we can do to help our, our new members feel welcome and get them oriented? I remember having um, three members, Sister uh, Jacqueline and uh, the other um, two officers that recently last year they left um i met with them and had and Ro rosemary right it was like an orientation ask questions answer questions and it was short and um i think that's how we did it and i'm assuming you found that helpful christina yeah i did yeah mm -hmm. Good, 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 good. Jacqueline, do you have your hand up? I can't. No, no, no. but I, I was thinking, um, I guess I'm fast forwarding and anticipating the most positive outcome, but the school wouldn't be up. The, um, the, the safe space would not be available necessarily when new members come, but plan at some point in time, if they are not familiar with the, with the uh, space uh, resilience center that they would be given information about it. Mm -hmm. okay. Chad, is that your hand? You're muted. committee is another thing we don't have. Remember your experience of becoming the board president. I'm sorry, I think I missed the beginning of what you said. Another thing we would need for, for is a nominating committee. We could I don't up. think we double. have to have that, though. I it think we can just up. do that by vote. Yep, sure could. We could do that as as a double up duty for for anybody who does uh, onboarding of uh, new members. I just want to add. Um, <clears throat> I just want to add that committees are losing board members. It's 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 a more recent phenomena. It's not just the Council on Aging. 
And because uh, board members move on and then they, depending on what their goals are. And there aren't enough of us to be forming little, little committees. You can break up into twos to do things, but um, how useful is it when we're not a full board? We should have more people on this board. So we really need to focus on recruiting rather than nominating um, and breaking up into small groups that um, would take another great deal of energy and effort to accomplish. Um, I think we need to focus on recruiting and being what Haley said at places where we can talk to people. I remember a year ago, I spoke to different people when I went to the open house. I wasn't able to go this year, but everyone who I ran into, I would speak to them about joining on this board. Um, so that's what I think we need to focus on. It's nice to have a full board and have this committee, that committee, that committee, but we don't have the power. We don't have the, the, people. the, the people power to do all of that. Right. Any other ideas with regards to what you think we should do at a new member orientation? It certainly sounds like that everybody's in agreement. We we need yep. to welcome folks. Um, could have lunch at the senior center. That might be kind of fun. If you're doing like a tour of the building, um, they mm -hmm. could stay for lunch. It'd be, it'd be nice to do. Yeah, yeah, okay, awesome. And do you, do you wanna make a plug for the MCOA training? Before, before I forget to ask you. Well, yes, I'm happy to. I wasn't certain okay. if the signups had already passed or not, so I didn't. Well, I I got a block. I got a block of, um, I'll call it reservations to go. So, okay, awesome. So we have an opportunity as a council to attend a mass council on aging training. Um, and it will give us an opportunity and feel free to correct me about anything that I may be saying, Haley, because I don't, I don't know a whole lot about it, but <laughs> I'm excited in that it, um, it's going to give us a chance to hear from the state about what other council on agings are doing and meet other people who are serving on the COAs. Yes, it does that. They also give you the background, you know, why were COAs created? What is the function? What can a COA do? What can't a COA do? Um, so it does kind of help you if you've never been on a committee before, if you've never been on a council on aging before, it gives you the whole background that you need. Um, and, it, you know, it kind of talks about how it fits within the town, but, but it really just gives you that basis of, you know, why were COAs created to help senior centers. Um, so it, it's really helpful. And MCOA always does great presentations. And I think it's in, I wrote it down. It's on Wednesday, May 31st from 1.30 to 3.30 in Ludlow. So it's not too far. And really? um, yeah. That's where their home office is. Oh. Hmm. East Hampton is one of us their main office out here but um but yeah it'd be really nice and anyone who wants to go um it would be helpful if you just told me so i can confirm with mcoa how many seats they actually need um but it's you know it's really nice to do and then you get to meet other board members too so you can say to them you know what are the challenges your community is facing what do you do for programs um you know it's good to network so, so I'm, I'm planning on going i i hope others will as well because i think it could be really valuable What's the date again? Wednesday, May 31st, so the last day of May, 1.30 to 3.30 in Ludlow. Can we carpool, Haley? We could do that. Yeah, we could take one of the senior center vans. <laughs> Road trip. Yeah, that's right. Who know? wants to drive? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to drive. But... Yeah, I'd like more information on that. Okay. That sounds pretty good. I I I kept thinking about the two day extravaganza down on, in Falmouth. Oh, and, that's actually like a four day extravaganza. Yeah, that's the annual conference. Yeah, that's the big Megillah. 
Yeah, that's a big one. And then it oscillates between Falmouth and Danvers. And then today was the small and rural conference, which I had encouraged Al and Julia to go to. So they got to meet some other COAs and, and learn some good stuff. So I would much rather do Ludlow for two or so hours or so. <laughs> Then yeah, imagine why. <laughs> Relatively <laughs> painless. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Although the Zoom things we did were really quite interesting, though. Yeah. They do a really good job. Yeah. So. Huh. So these are trainings they offer every year. Um, it's they usually have. It's been a while, I think, because of COVID. But oh. um, and it used to be too that like, you could request it on demand. Like I hosted one in Bernardston, and we had neighboring COAs come and, and participate. So I don't know if they'll do that again. I hope so, but this at least is in person. <clears throat> nice. Yes. Good, good, good. So it's on my calendar. Hopefully you all check your busy schedules. You can carve out a couple of hours and, and join us. Yeah. yeah. Good. All right. Um, next up, I think, is Norma with the meals report. Okay. So let me promote to panelists. Click it there. Okay. Are you there, Norma? There she is. There, now you're good. All right. They should be able to hear you and see you. Okay. Don't click Can you hear us, Norma? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, excellent. Yes. So welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is a report from um, the March meeting. And I don't know, just tell me if you get sick of hearing this, but this is what they talk about and I'm supposed to relay it. So um, Riley commented on a few items from the um, Nutrition Project Council report previously, and um, they were just you know, preferences, I think. Like someone wanted to um, have cabbage rolls actually rolled and not as a casserole and stuff the peppers uh, and not just put them in a casserole hole. So um, I think that they, you know, he'll look into this, but said, that it really depends when you're doing dinners for um, 700 people, you don't have time to stuff peppers and mushrooms or whatever. So that's one, one thing. And they complained that with shepherd's pie, they didn't get enough corn and corn has been um, kind of a, a commodity a time, of course, in the summer, it's, it's um, a good thing, but um, they don't have enough to put in the pie so that they will just give another, uh, some corn, but an additional vegetable. Um, and they did have some, some new meals though. And uh, one was chicken stew and pesto cream were new on the menus and um, Riley got positive and negative feedback. So he's gonna check into that. They also made white pizza, minestrone soup and vegetarian chili, both seen in the best and the worst section. So we'll let you know how this turns out. Um, another comment was about only getting one piece of bread with some meals. And, um, you know, then there's others that just say, I don't eat bread, I don't want it. And, you know, they're trying to give them a balanced meal. But I think the misunderstanding was that if they say this is a sandwich, you do expect two pieces of bread. But if they don't say it's a sandwich, you may only get one. Um, so, yeah. Um, 
So the January survey was on meatloaf with tomato sauce. And a lot of them complained about this because they, they feel the meatloaf uh, is gravy and not um, lots of tomatoes. Well, this was an Italian meatloaf, but it's, um, so I guess they're gonna go back to the, the gravy one. Um, there was a comment about fruit not being ripe. Well, in the middle of winter, you know, they get it ahead of time and, you know, it doesn't even ripen up if you, of course, the bananas get overripe, but, you know, some fruit like pears don't always ripen up right away. And so they probably shouldn't have, you know, served those then or waited another week or whatever. Um, comment about not liking spinach, but overall meal, the meals were, are good. Um, and so this is from, um, Riley's menu update, their new recipes, baked ziti, white pizza, pesto cream sauce. And um, for March, they were gonna be trying Irish soda bread and pumpkin bars um, to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Um, commodity updates, there's not a lot of commodities. Sometimes we have a lot in dried fruits like raisins or dates and uh, now they, um, Kelly said that they will be getting some um, more meat available in 2023. So hopefully in the fall, um, we'll see more of that. Summer is coming and the, the farmers, local farmers are very generous in sharing, you know, some of their produce. Um, okay, and they have another van that they're using for to deliver meals and that's up and running. And um, the April menu has some cold meals to go with the warmer weather. And, um, and that's when we're gonna be looking to the, the farmers for vegetables and fruits. Um, there's been kitchen annual inspections are done by Kelly and Riley. Um, Kelly is a new nutritionist. Well, she's been there a year now, but um, there was also a surprise inspection from the Northampton Board of Health, and it went well. Only then uh, one item was brought up that needed a repair, and that was some leaky sink that they had had already take, you know, had test taken care of. And Kelly's doing the inspections for the dining sites, and then having a sit-down meal with um, with the patrons and. Uh, offering a lunch and learn um, little lecture as well. She puts information on the back of the menus, but not everybody turns them over to look at that. So this is a way to engage them a little more. And um, there's an opening for a home delivered meal driver uh, that may have uh, been resolved by now. So the next meeting is May 10th. And, um, you know, I, we do it every other month and they change from the first Wednesday to the second Wednesday so that uh, more people could attend. Any questions? Yeah. Do you have your thumb up? I'm giving you a thumbs up. Thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. Nice job, Norma. Thank you. Thank you, Norma. <laughs> you're welcome. I do laugh when you talked about spinach. They're just like children. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. They are, but you know, that's what happens. You kind of regress a little there. And, you know, we all have our dog. favorite things and things yeah. we don't really care for. Yeah, no, that's right. Well, you know, they do very well. I think the, the meals are good. And when we get back to in-person meetings, Riley always tries them out on us, so that's fun. Too. Oh, fun! Yeah, yeah. Oh, that is neat. Yeah. yeah. Do you like this cake today, or do you like, you know, there was one thing about sandwiches and grilled cheese sandwiches, and they didn't arrive very warm, and you know, it, there's nothing worse than a cold sandwich that should be hot. But anyway. Yeah. 
well, I don't want to take your time. So good meeting. I, I could hear you, but I couldn't see you, which was fine. I said, turn off the video, you don't have to be looking at me. But if I can just say one quick thing, um, do people know about the Medical Reserve Corps? When you're talking about, you know, these shelters, because I'm a member of it. And um, I mean, they have it so well planned out. So they might be someone to contact. And I can talk to the person that I always get emails from, but, um, and, and we had a exercise at the Mullen Center. And of course the students had to get in their credits. So they got the pick of whatever. And um, I couldn't even work as a practitioner because uh, it was already filled. But they, we stayed overnight and I said, well, I don't really think I need to stay overnight, but I'll be back in the morning to help you clean up. And so they gave a meal and, but they had cots there. They had a lot of cots and they also had made arrangements that people could bring their animals. They had to put them in a certain area, but wow. you know, I think it was well thought out and they would be very valuable to, uh, to talk to. I mean, I don't think they would, be called in for if it was too hot, but you know, if they couldn't get heat or whatever, they yeah. would do something different. Yeah. <clears throat> That's a, a great thought. I because I think they were involved, wasn't it? The medical corps handled when we yeah, medical reserve corps, yeah. Pandemic well, that includes a lot of things, giving shots and you know, um, yeah, with the yeah. COVID shots and the flu shots and stuff. Yep, yep, a great resource for us, clearly. Yeah. Norma, is that a statewide organization or, or, or what's yeah. it? Well, yes, they Amherst, um, they used to be more separate, but they've taken in other towns. And I don't know if Northampton is part of that, but you know how they say you should have a travel bag ready to go with medicines for a certain amount of time or yep. pet food or water, or, you know, it's, um, whole list of things, but um, I attended one in Northampton a couple um, of years ago, and and it was good because they gave you handouts and and stuff. So you know, we if people are interested, we might be able to do that. You know, I could write up what what they've uh, suggested in a packet. So, but anyway, <laughs> that's another issue. Yeah. That would be useful for us because we've mentioned a resilience bag, but we've never identified what should be in there. Yeah, so that's right. Okay. If All that right. is something you have, I would definitely welcome okay. Okay. getting that and sharing that out. Terry, did you have your hand yeah, up? You did, yeah. yeah. What is the Medical Reserve Corps and where is it located? Well, it's located in all our homes. You volunteer for this and... Um, I mean, they want registered nurses. Of course, they want physicians, but you know, they're. Um, if, if you might be called on some disaster to go, I mean, I don't feel at my age I can travel to Argentina right now, you know. Uh, but um, you know, it's 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 more for a disaster type thing, I think. Oh, okay, great, thank it's, you. It's a little like the Red Cross. Yeah, okay. that's right. volunteer Red Cross yeah. people are paid and there's volunteers. Yeah, this one's all volunteers. Yeah. What, what they did in Franklin County is they interviewed people after COVID uh, to be prepared for the next epidemic that comes along. Mm -hmm. and they archived. I was they interviewed me as one person, but mm -hmm. they archived all that information and it's going to be looked at and used research to build better programs later. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Christina, do you have your hand up? Yeah. Um, I'm mute. It is a national um, program. And then each <clears throat> state, Massachusetts has a chapter. And, uh, and then there was a chapter that started in 2005 for the medical, the school of, you know, School of Nursing to have nursing students join all the other medical professionals to help mm -hmm. out in an emergency. But 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 Norma's right. It's 
it's individuals volunteering so that when the time arises, they all converge to, uh, to use their expertise to help people. But I'm wondering if there is a contact specifically, a specific contact for West, Western Mass. Okay, I will um, try to find that out and let you know next time. Yeah, it's Lauren and um, Davis, but I think she's a volunteer too. I don't know, but you know, I've interacted with the police chief and um, and with Lauren, um, so I'll let you know. Great, thank you. Great, thank you. Okay. Excellent. All right. Um, on to minutes. So hopefully everybody's had a chance to look at the February 9th, 2023 minutes that Terry sent out. Anybody have any changes, additions, edits? I just had one a one word change, Terry. Okay. Under it's under new business. It said April 2023, open meeting law lifted. I think it should say virtual. Yeah, like virtual provision or something to that effect. Yeah. This so, is in February? Yep. Where is it again? It was under listed under new business. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Oh, April 2023, open meeting law. Yep, and cross out open and put virtual. Oh. So we said it was lifted, but we're still meeting virtually. So it was extended. So um, Governor Healy extended it, the provision that we can meet remotely. Um, so I think right now the message that I'm hearing from town hall is to keep things status quo. Um, but I think they are looking at, you know, cause it, you know, it's easy for us to think, well, we can just go to the bank center, but there's a lot of committees in town. Um, so they have to make a decision that's going to be beneficial to everybody and take into account everybody's needs. So I think at this point, we're just waiting to hear um, about if we can do maybe like a hybrid thing, or like an every other month, one month in person, one month virtual. So we'll just wait, or I'll just wait to see what um, direction they go in. Okay. Great. Anybody see anything else? Somebody want to make a motion to approve? So moved. Someone so I'll make the corrections and send them out to everybody? Or just oh. make the corrections? I think we can, you can vote to accept them with that correction. Okay. And then we don't need to have them sent out again. Okay. Makes sense. Does that work? Okay. Is there a second? Okay. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And there you I'm are. In, I'm in favor, but I didn't uh, raise my hand quick enough. Okay. Awesome. Okay. We're good with February. Next up is March, Thursday, March 9th. Any, again, changes, edits, additions? I've got, Jacqueline, did you have your square lit up, but I didn't see a hand, so I wasn't sure. No. No, okay, all right. Um, Under old, do you have it up, Terry? Yep. Okay, under old business. Short-term goal setting cross out. 
Yeah. Or move it down because you've, yeah, you can cross it out because it's mentioned yeah. COA is identified resilient. So it seemed a little bit redundant there. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, and the first line expectations for meeting, I would say you could cross out, we should get instead review, we reviewed guidelines and then nix the two weeks ahead of time. What section is that? It's under old business. Okay. Say that again. Okay. So at the meeting, the expectations for the meeting, we reviewed the guidelines. Okay. Period. Yeah. That was it. Anybody have anything else? Okay. Someone want to make a motion? So moved. Motion with the corrections, right? Corrections, yes. And <clears throat> second it. Can I do it? Sounds good to me, Terry. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Any opposed? So I'll make the corrections and I'll send them to Haley. Yep. Okay. And then we'll post them online. Yep. Okay. Awesome. I was asking. Okay. All right. Do we have, is Dick with us, Haley? No, he said he wasn't feeling well. Um, but I can say that, and you can jump in anytime, Dennis. Um, we are actively soliciting donations. The friends are soliciting donations of scarves, pocketbooks, jewelry, any type of accessory um, throughout the month of May. And then on Saturday, June 10th, we will be on the town common selling our beautiful wares to the public to raise money uh, for the Amherst Senior Center. So if you have something you want to contribute, you can drop it off at the Senior Center during our regular business hours. And then um, you can say hi to us at the Farmer's Market on Saturday, June 10th. Are these new items or? No, they can, they, no, they can be used. Yeah, just nothing. I mean, we would like it to be like in working condition, like no broken clasps or something like that, but it can be old. When does the farmer's market start? I think it already started actually. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. This last Saturday was the first and I was able to uh, get permission from uh, a gentleman. Dave. Yeah, Dave, uh, I forget his last name right now, but I, and I just had his card a minute ago. But yeah, I ran into him there and I was able to secure permission. And so now we're, the friends will be ready to go on the 10th of June. Okay. <clears throat> June. Now, those items were scarves, bags, and jewelry. Is that right? Yes. Any kind of accessory. So like a wallet would be fine, ties, you know, anything like that mm -hmm. would be perfectly fine. In or out of season? Ooh, depending on your fashion sense, it's fashion always sense. in season. <laughs> so we will take anything, anything nice, I should say. Yeah, anything nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, do they, have, do you know, did they, how did, or perhaps you know the answer, Dennis, how did they do with the mailing? Did Oh, we did well, right, Dennis? We, I think, um, yeah, the you last... got the numbers I don't, but yeah, yeah, I know that we got a, a good, honest response from uh, from the people in town. Whoa. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Um, we got like six thousand, I think. I think it was about six thousand dollars, and That's one it? person wrote a thousand dollar check, which was wow. pretty remarkable to me. That was, you know, and it was anonymous, so I really, you know, whoever that person was, thank you. Wow. So that goes to support the scholarships for uh, different uh, classes. Yes, and it so goes on. to um, wellness scholarships, memory care programs, you know, the activities and services that we offer. Um, they're all donation based, really. Uh, most of them. So. Now, last month we got um, Department of Elder Affairs. Uh, what month are we in? Uh, February. Yeah. February, we got $60,000 from Department of Elder Affairs or whatever they call it now. E we got a formula fund grant. Yeah, twelve dollars per person over fifty-five, I think. Yeah, I think fifty-five or sixty. 
but it's $12 an elder. Um, and that goes to every COA across the Commonwealth. It's a grant um, from the state determined based on the number of older adults who fill out the census. So if when people say, oh, the census, who can be bothered? It actually does affect the amount of money we get. If more people fill it out, we get more formula fund. Um, and a lot of our formula fund goes towards funding a salary position. So while we do receive a, a pretty sizable donation based on our population, we don't actually get to use all of it. it I think, I don't wanna give an exact number because I don't know it, but the majority of it goes to funding a paid position um, for the staff. Which ain't great if we got five and it can only pay one. <laughs> yeah. Makes it um, tough. It, it, yes, it absolutely does make it tough. I mean, thankfully we do get the other three full-time positions paid through the town appropriated funds. But yeah, you know, when you think about what your your take home is um, from that fund, it, yeah, you know, it'd be, be nice to have a little bit more. Mm. But. Mm. Okay. Thank Any, you, friends. <laughs> yeah. It's always yeah, good to have friends. friends. Yes. <laughs> All right. I don't have any topics um, for number 10. Um, our next meeting is Thursday the 11th. Um, what was number 10? Number 10 is topics not reasonably oh. anticipated by okay, the chair. Thank you. Thank you. 48 Thank hours you. in advance, and I, I didn't anticipate any. So we're moving to Wednesdays now, you're saying? No. no. May Actually, 10th is a Wednesday. The 11th. Oh, the 11th. Okay. Five o'clock. Yes. Okay. Very good. Yes. I move that we close. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all so much. See you next month. Thank you. Take Won't care. Won't see me next month, but uh, you'll be in good oh, hands. No, what are we gonna do? <laughs> we got Dennis. Uh oh, oh we got no. Dennis. They're gonna be great. Oh. Yeah. Watch out, Dennis. I'm gonna have Make to sure study up really side, hard Dennis. on that one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.